I chose the right wife. Let me show you this. Nicole got up at two in the morning and five in the morning. I can't even touch this, it's so hot. Hey, it's very hot. To stoke this donkey. And it's just boiling away nicely. This water should be nice and hot soon and we can have warm showers, but that is called dedication. <laughs> So we are actually in pack-up mode this morning. Funny thing is we're not actually leaving. We're just moving to a different spot. We're moving from the old school ox wagons to a modern day ox wagon. We're gonna be packing everything into the vehicle, heading out early, doing hunting the whole day. And then early afternoon, we're gonna head out to uh, the top of a mountain to a beautiful campsite overlooking a, a valley set up there for the afternoon, make a nice little fire, um, cook dinner there and watch the sunset, maybe get some monkeys while we're at that spot. But yeah, there's so much potential on top of these mountains that we, we haven't really had a chance to explore just because it's quite a long drive up there. But being able to stay up there is just gonna give us a, I think a different perspective and allow us to um, experience a different part of the Farm that we don't often get to see, which is great. So come along with us, it's gonna be fun. Let's get this ox wagon up the mountain. <laughs> bye bye, ox wagons. See you next time. When you have hunted monkeys as much as I have, there are some things that you learn over the years and one of those things is that the monkeys like to move around in early mornings, presumably to look for food and if you can catch them while they're in motion, you stand a great chance of being able to take a shot. We stumbled across a troop of monkeys in the best possible place, running across a cliff face with nowhere to hide and I ended up having to put a little stalk on to get into a shootable position for my first monkey of the day. This has to be the best scope cam clip of the entire trip for me. Perfect lighting, perfect headshot, and these 34 grain javelin slugs at 1050 feet per second out of my Impact M3 just do the business. Well, there you go finally got that that monkey we were looking for this, he obviously just wanted to get some sun so we waited a bit he came up into the top of the tree where the sun was and managed to get a perfect headshot on him so i want to show you something here quickly um this over here is a leather magazine holder so i can keep a spare impact magazine it was custom made for me by someone at splitting image taxidermy thank you very much <laughs> it works great and he actually he said to me, if, if there's any uh, shops or distributors out there that want to sell them, I must let him know. So if anyone is interested in these, put link down below or put a comment down below and um, hopefully we can get them to you. So we've just hit that perfect time of the morning now when the light is just at the right angle that the, the, the monkey's kind of silhouette with like a a silver lining if you can call it that and it's quite easy to spot them it's also the time when it starts to warm up so the monkeys are climbing up to the tops of the trees and it just makes us it makes it so much easier to see them so we're picking them up much easier and it just shows how many there are i mean we've seen them probably every every 200 meters in the road there's a new troop it's crazy so i guess it's just a case of moving on to new locations and you know because once you shoot one or two in a troop they're all going to hiding so you have to kind of keep moving um Another way to do it is 
if you see a troop and, and they're going to hiding, you drop someone off and then the, the vehicle keeps going. The monkeys think you've moved on and that person can ambush them. But it's tricky because of the, the height of the bushes and the grass. You would have to take basically a standing shot, which is very difficult. So we prefer to kind of keep moving and, and use that strategy and surprise them a bit while they're in the tops of the trees. Because when they're up in the trees, it's easy to get a, into a position to shoot them. You can lie prone. You can rest on a fence pole. You can rest, rest on a branch. You can rest on the bull bar of the, of the truck. It's very easy. But yeah, it's been a good morning so far. Got a few down. Hoping that the, our good luck continues. As you can see, this has turned out to be probably the best morning so far out of all of them on this trip. And the best part is that all of this is happening with the air gun. Yes, part of that is luck. We are just showing up at the right place at the right time. But this Impact M3 shooting such heavy slugs at these blitzing speeds makes it so easy. I don't have to worry too much about the wind. And from a 25 meter zero, the slug only drops 1.8 mils at 100 meters. That's unheard of. For production small ball PCP air gun. At this point we move on to the neighbor's farm which as you can see is a lot less wild and a lot more developed. We'd been asked by the neighbor to come and help with a monkey problem and of course that is a request that we don't turn down. This is a beautiful location with mountains all around, the sort of place where you just come to relax and soak up the sun, and we head down to a field where we'd seen monkeys the year before, hoping to get some shots in. Straight away we see plenty of guinea fowl, unfortunately we hadn't got permission to shoot any so we leave them alone, and we start prepping for a monkey onslaught with the 22-250 this time. Running out of ammo. It's just a little bit too far for the air gun. Well, that was two monkeys for certain. That was a, a really great sequence. We're actually lying in the exact same spot that I smashed a, f a few monkeys here last time. Um, last time I came, it was like late evening and we, we got a whole bunch of them. Maybe we must come back here later today and see if we can get some more. But yeah, great, great morning. I must say, um, this Fry and Devic silencer on this 22250, really, really liking it. It's titanium, it's really light and it, um, it's a reflex, so it comes back quite a bit. It just makes this gun balance a lot better. Um, it, it feels like it hasn't got a silence on it, but it's actually really, it's actually really quiet. I'm quite impressed. So I'll, I'll link them down below. It's, I'm not sponsored by them or anything, but um, I really, really like their stuff. So check them out. They're made in Norway, pretty expensive, but really, really awesome. I wanted to make my rifles feel like short, they're shorter and lighter. Um, and the silence is doing exactly that, so super happy. Well, the cows are coming home, so let's go look for that monkey out in the field before it gets trampled. Finally, here he is. Took a while to find him, but... I think I got him in the head. Oh yeah. Yeah, I probably won't be able to show you this. So this might have to be for the extended version only, but his whole face is pretty much gone. 
and that's called a humane kill. I'm curious to see how far this was. I'm guessing it was about 250 or maybe just less than that. Yeah, 254. 254 meters, perfect headshot. Um, and he was standing upright, so what I did was, I think I might have aimed for the head, but dialed a bit under 250, just in case uh, it was further, then it would drop a bit further down and hit it lower, but as, as you see, it hit perfectly in the head and there's brains everywhere, so very happy with that. Cool. We move on to a different spot and I'll bring out the FX Dreamline GRS, hoping to get an opportunity. And I've got to be honest with you, I got lucky here. This gun is awesome, but it just wasn't the right tool for this wind. The little 22 grain hybrid slugs just get blown around way too easily at these distances. Got him. I ended up switching back to the 22 to 50 and this was definitely the right tool. The wind was pumping and the monkeys were not wanting to keep still. So far on this trip I've been very happy with the new 4 to 16 element helix scope and the Aculite mounts. They have been spot on and once again I get a chance to put them to good use. Love that sound. Well that was a Nice little section with the two uh, GRS guns, the Dreamline GRS and obviously my 20 250 I finally got a monkey, it is like the craziest situation because this gun is not set up for long range shooting, it's not very powerful, it's only shooting like 40 or 45 foot pounds, something like that. And we got a shot at 180 meters and I actually just, I mean I, I missed a few times and then I finally got my wind call right and held a bit over as well and smashed him. So got my monkey down with the with the uh, Dreamline, hopefully we can get a couple more, but then came into this field here and managed to blitz a couple more monkeys with the 22250. This 22250, I mean some of these weren't hit so great, like a bit far back in the body, but it's, it's torn them in two and that's kind of what it's for. It's um, it's very forgiving, those bullets are made to, those 50 grand VMAXs at like 3800 feet per second are made to just completely disintegrate upon impact. It also makes it safe because once the bullet hits an animal like this, it's not tumbling and going forever. It's actually, there's nothing left of it. So, very happy with that. It has been a successful morning of monkey hunting by anyone's standards. It's certainly not easy to target such clever animals, but we decided to change things up and focus on a different species for a while. You may remember when I came out here last year during lockdown, to these rocky slopes and managed to get some dussies down for the farm workers dinner. Well this place is a dussy hot spot. A little over half a century ago this canal was built and the resulting rock structures provided the perfect little paradise for dussies. Nicole is behind the dreamline and we're hoping to get her a dussy or two to round off a brilliant day of shooting. So we've come out to a, a spot here and basically planned our day around the hope that there'd be dussies out here. This is the perfect ecosystem for dussies. We've got a section of of uh, big boulders here, which is was formed back in the 60s when they when they uh, made this big canal up top here for all the uh, irrigating all the farms. And the canal on top and this little stream at the bottom created like a natural barrier for predators. So the dussies are pretty safe in the middle. Big open place so they can see if any predators are coming and in the morning it gets really good sun here so there's lots of dussies here we know this because we saw them uh, was it yesterday or the day before we came past here and actually managed to get a few and we thought for certain that we'd if we'd come here like 10 o'clock in the morning as it starts to heat up that we'd see a whole bunch and for some reason they're just gone which just shows they're very unpredictable little animals and sometimes they just have their own plans but yeah we're really hoping to see one but that's just the way it goes We've got the beautiful uh, Dreamline GRS, which I actually haven't shot any animals with yet. I've only done target shooting and, and reviews with it. So I was really hoping we could get some and I was really hoping we could get Nicole's first Dussie, but alas, that's just the way hunting goes. 
doesn't look like they're going to be coming out now we'll either come back here later this afternoon or maybe tomorrow and see if we can catch them at a time where they actually want to come out maybe we'll see some monkeys on the way back and hopefully we can get a few that is where the hunting ends for the day but stay tuned because things are about to get really interesting so we're about to try something different there's a mountain pass going up here that I've never actually driven before partly because my previous vehicle couldn't do it <laughs> and uh, also partly because I didn't know that this was even part of Whitmoskua farm but I was told that this is a great place to go not only for a beautiful scenic drive but also for some dassies so we're gonna head up we might see some monkeys along the way we might see some dassies not sure but either way we know it's gonna be good because the views are gonna be fantastic I think we're going to stop somewhere close to the top for lunch, pop open the awning and bring out the camp chairs and cook some food because it's about that time now. And after that, depending on how well it goes, actually regardless of how well it goes, we're going to take a different mountain road up the opposite side of the valley um, and we're going to set up camp for tonight. I want to try to do that early because, um, yeah, it's just nice to be able to relax sit down have a beer and then start getting ready to watch the sunset without rushing and we may get some monkeys on that side too so let's hit this road and see what happens up ahead we see a road that we think is the right road we aren't completely sure and we're about to stumble upon a real adventure the drive starts really well the valley itself is really beautiful we see some mountain reed buck chilling in the shade but very soon we realize that something isn't quite right I have a funny feeling that we've not gone the right way because that does not look like much of a road there. But I guess we have to give it a try. <laughs> Must go somewhere. We've seen switchbacks up there that go up to the top of the mountain. So maybe it is the right way. Maybe it's not. But let's figure it out. Opening these things is a nightmare sometimes. <sighs> I grab the camera and entrust Nicole with driving duty. She can hardly see over the steering wheel, but she grew up on a farm like this and could drive from the age of like 10. So I'm pretty confident we're in good hands. The further we go up the valley, the more overgrown the road becomes. And when we start seeing full on bushes growing in the middle of the road and big boulders hidden in the grass, it makes me a little bit nervous. This does not look like a road, so I'm not sure this is the road that they were talking about, but at some time in the past it was a road, which means that hopefully we can get through here. But, I mean, look at this. The grass is basically higher than, higher than the front of the truck. There's some big boulders here. Definitely an adventure, to say the least. Look at this, nothing here. We start climbing up the switchbacks and the road seems to improve a little bit. I can at least see where I'm putting my wheels now. And down below we get a nice bird's eye view of the valley we come from. Farmers in the area, if you're watching this and I've trespassed onto your property, I really do apologize. We were well and truly lost. So it looks like we've reached the, the summit of our little mountain pass that we weren't supposed to go on our way down now we've just joined onto the road that i think we were supposed to be on you can see this one's been ridden a bit but look at this i mean we've just stopped off to, to take in some views these mountains are spectacular look at that it's beautiful eh? insane despite the drama the views made it all completely worth it time to head down though and onto our campsite for the night well, this is really cool. Um, we're coming down the other side of the mountain now, and I'm I'm actually spotting my old favorite dassie hunting spot, that cluster of rocks that where I filmed basically all of my Oxwagon Diary dassie videos. It's just down there, but yeah, it's nice to just see it from a different perspective. Maybe we'll get to pop back there sometime, but for now we want to leave those low-lying spots to recover from the drought let the dusty population come back up again and 
probably be at the next year again. With that little adventure over and the familiar roads that I know so well in Sartagain, it's time to move on and start making our way back up a different mountain to find camp for the night. at our campsite it's just gone 3 p.m so we're going to start preparing to have a very late lunch and then just wind down for the rest of the day i've had to level the, the vehicle here by uh, pulling it up on some rocks on this side just so that when we open the rooftop tent we don't roll out but we've got a beautiful setting over here wind is from that side so the vehicle will actually shelter us when we sit here and i think it's going to be great so let's get ready So, sun is going to be going down soon. There it is over there, low on the horizon. And here is our beautiful campsite. Tent is up, awnings out. Just collecting some firewood. Gonna start the fire very soon because the temperature will drop as soon as that sun is over the horizon. In fact, it's dropping a lot down here now where, where we're in shade. So, let's get moving. As the sun starts to set, I'm tempted to try putting to words just how breathtaking the experience of camping up here really was, but I don't think I'd do it justice. We were really lucky to have good weather, it could have easily been miserably cold and windy at this time of the year, but we just absorbed all the sights and sounds and smells around us as it got darker, eventually putting some meat on the fire and finishing the day with dinner. As always, thanks for watching. There is one more episode coming that you definitely won't want to miss, so make sure you subscribed, and I'll see you on the next one.